morning church. Morning. Yeah, forgive me, I'm a little nervous. Uh, Mary said she's going to pick, pick a couple songs. I didn't realize that last one was going to be so emotional. But let's bow our heads. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Sabbath day and the day of rest. Let us come to worship you, Lord. And please give me the words to speak and let me be a light shining to you and let the focus be on you and not on me. Lord, in your name I pray, amen. Amen. My name's Philip Wagner, I'm a drug addict. It never gets easy to say that. I was raised in an Adventist home, so I thought, you know, it's never going to happen to me. <clears throat> I went to Adventist schools my whole life, uh, raised in the church. So, like I said, I never, never thought it would happen to me. My mother was probably the finest Christian woman I've ever known in my life. She, she died in 96. And there's no reason to, there's no, I don't know how you put it, there's no moment in my life that I thought, well, there's an excuse for being a, for being an addict. But in 2004, I fell off a house in Hot Springs, right across the lake from Andy Laura's house. And I broke my back in three places, or two places, L3 and 4, which is right above the, the belt line in the back. And the doctor prescribed me Percocet. And it started out for six, you know, six months, I'd take one or two, and it wasn't bad. But over the course of the next couple of years, it kept getting worse and worse. And then I was taking three or four, and then it changed to five or six. Then it got to eight or ten. And so I struggled with that for over 10 years. And, you know, most of you people know that I come back to this church and I sit back there in the sound booth and I was loaded on pain pills. And I struggled with it. I've seen family I love struggle with it. I, Susie and I had a tough time in our marriage because of it. I rode around with a gun in the truck thinking I was going to kill myself. What stopped me was when Susie told me, she wants me to be a life trip. <clears throat> and then it really hit home, so I was determined I was going to quit. And then in 2013, I had a motorcycle crash. I got prescribed more pain medicine. So that, that kind of pushed my rehab back a little bit. And I remember standing out in the lobby one day, Dr. Tangley told me that, you know, while that pain's in your head, I said, no. I said, yeah. She said, if you actually decrease your doses, you'll probably feel better. Boy, was she right. And I've been on the other side of prayer where people are praying for you. You can feel, feel it working in your life. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to quit cold turkey. And I did with the help of my wife. I went through withdrawals. Couldn't sleep at night. But through the power of prayer, I'm here to stand with you today that I kicked the habit. Amen. Lord, praise God. And what changed? Susie told me, he said, we need to have counseling. So we invited Brandon over to the house to counsel with us. And he put up, he wrote on a piece of paper, put my name on one side, Susie's name on the other, and got at the top. He drew a line pointing up. And says it close. The only way those two lines will get closer together is you both seek God. Mm. And I'm here to tell you it works. Mm. So things started getting better. 
And <clears throat> Brandon challenged us to read our Bible. I couldn't get myself up any earlier. I was working in Little Rock, or Little Rock at the time. And it's, I was getting up at 4, 4 30 anyway. And I'm not going to have time. I get home, not, I don't have time at night. And it dawned on me one day I to use technology. I downloaded the Bible app. So it started in the mornings. I plugged it into my radio and I started listening. I started in Matthew, the New Testament. And I was listening. It started out just a couple minutes a day. I get a couple chapters in. And then it got started a little longer, a little longer. And then pretty soon I'm listening to the Bible all the way to work. And I would, I would have a devotional in the morning before it started. And I would, my prayer list got longer and longer and longer. And pretty soon I'm waking up before my alarm went off. And, I, you know, I'd, I'd go out there and sit in my truck for five, ten minutes having prayer before I even started. And I've just, it has made such a difference in my life. Hmm. And so God made time. He, he showed me how to make time to do all that. And so after all that, you know, just 10 or 15 minutes a day in the ride to work, my prayer list gets longer. It's just, you know, and it's just amazing how he... How he works in your life. Amen. And I've, I've learned that he's very specific. Mm. He's specific about what day we worship on and what we do. Mm. And I found out just through my personal experience that if you, you know, it tells us in Matthew 6, 7, I think it is, where he says, don't just pray many words, you know, be more specific. And when you start labeling all the sins you think you've committed, it gets, you get a pretty bleak look at yourself, you know. But then I realized that God's there to, to cover those sins. Amen. Amen. And uh, like I said, I was raised in an Adventist church, went to Adventist schools my whole life. And I've heard stories, Bible stories my whole life. But as I've listened, I've picked out other things that I've, in stories that I really didn't know. You know, I noticed that, uh, just for example, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he didn't want to. He pleaded with him not to baptize him. He needed to be baptized by Jesus. And he said, no, you need to. And he did what the Lord asked. Mm. And, I, and through the story of David, I realized that if God can forgive somebody like that, he can forgive me. And I should be more forgiving. Amen. And, uh, you know, I noticed that my quality of life has gone up. Um, I found a peace that I, I wish everybody in this room could find. Amen. And there's family that, you know, this summer we were out at Lake Catherine State Park, and we, when we weren't having church because of the virus, we had just kind of sat around and had our own worship service, and people have noticed a change in my life. And, you know, I didn't realize it that it showed, but it does. And that's really about all of my testimony. I just want to challenge everybody to to do to get in the word and search it for yourselves and explore it. Yeah, I promise you, just give me 15 minutes a day, it will make a difference in your life. Amen. 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 Sorry, it's so short. <laughs> First of all, the sermon doesn't have to be an hour long to be impactful, right? Amen. That's right. And I hope I can get to this without being emotional, but I'm, I'm not making promises because I already feel it right now. So, I don't know if you guys could know that the fact that Philip was even standing up here today has been an answer to my prayer for years and years, and not just mine, but my family, and I'm sure my church family as well. Huh? You hear that? <laughs> But it, it, 
take you back to years ago. This this addiction lasted how long, Phil? Like ten years. Like ten years. This went on. Okay. And we became aware as a family that Philip had a problem because of the way he acted, the way um, he was high. Uh, let's just get real. He was high, and you know, we could tell. We could tell in the way that he acted and treated other people, you know, family, Susie. And I remember coming up here. This is when Steve Evanson used to uh, be our pastor here, so it's been quite some time ago. But um, at 7 o'clock on Sabbath mornings, he always uh, would open up and encourage people if you have something in your heart, come out and let's pray about it. And so we would all gather together. It was always a small group. But I remember even back then, like, just being so fearful for Susie and Philip's marriage because of the toll that this addiction took on them. Mm. And I remember just praying and praying and praying to God, you know, to bring healing to this marriage and to Philip. And it always did my heart so good to be able to do that, but to also have people that were in there, and they would put their hands over me, and they would pray too, and they pray so hard for Susan Phillips and Phillips' addiction. And I was so thankful for those prayers that, are, that were burning me as well. I remember many nights, uh, now this is when Maddie and Hunter were considerably smaller, but I remember at nighttime, we would try to have, you know, devotional or something, not, not every night that I do it, but I tried to. And my kids were aware that something was up too, and so we would pray, Phil, and we would pray. And in time, they could see God at work, you know. And so just the fact that he's here today, standing up, is just an awesome, awesome answer to prayer. And God is so good. Amen. You know, whenever somebody in your family suffers with addiction or whatever it may be, it's not just that one person that suffers. It's the whole family, the community, the church family. Am I right? Amen. We all suffer, right? And so it makes the impact on us all. Um and I, and I hope that I'm not overstepping my bounds, Phil, by sharing some things. But, you know, like I said, the, the addiction took such a toll on just not only Philip, but the people that he loved the most, being Susie, especially in the boys. Um, things really took a toll on their marriage, like I said. Um, Susie was constantly in fear that Philip wasn't going to wake up the next morning because he took too much medication. The interaction that they had was not good because she she was angry at the fact that he was addicted to this to begin with. And I know that deep down he probably wasn't happy with himself either. So the way they interacted was toxic almost. It's like they didn't even like being around each other and forget about affection or being kind to one or another or a kind word. That was just how it was. And it hurt us to see that and to be a part of that. And, um, and there was times where we noticed that because of this, Phil would pull away sometimes, um, as you can imagine, because he was either, you know, didn't want to be around us or things weren't good at home with Susie. And so naturally, you don't want to be around those people. And so he would pull away. But I, I don't want to focus a whole lot on that part of it. Like I said, that was a long span of time that we all, you know, dealt with that and, and prayed over him. But there's been some awesome changes that I have seen uh, that has come as a result of this. Amen. And um, the biggest change that I see is their marriage. Mm. And I remember even telling Susie and them here a while back, man, you guys have such a powerful testimony. I hope that someday that you will share this. And, and there's more to this story, and, and they need to talk more about it. But I think it's a great that you even made the first step to do the testimony today. But um just their marriage, um, for me personally, because as you know, we're a very close family, and so we're very involved. We talk, and we share, and she would share things with me. Maybe not everything, but she would share. But um, just uh, the words were more kind between them. The interactions they had were more kind. The affection, the sweet touches, um, things like that. And man, that just does your heart good when you see people do that. You know what I mean? Don't you always want to see people happy and loving instead of, you know, hurt and angry? Amen. So I saw that. And um, not only did it just affect their marriage, but it also impacted how he and she would treat other people as well. And I noticed. Um, I don't know if you recall, but like Philip said, for years he would come to church and sit at the sound booth, you know, sit back there. And a lot of times, you know, sometimes he would visit, but for the most part, he didn't really have a lot of interest to do that. Now, you can't hardly get, like Susie will teach you, you can't hardly get him to shut up. He just talks all the time. So he's very friendly. He's happy. And so I noticed that in his disposition. 
And something else that I noticed is, you know, when they were challenged to spend time reading God's word, that's when you start noticing the changes, you know. Yeah. And um, then all of a sudden you start hearing him talking about prayer and about how he prayed and things like that. Um, and then also, even when it came to just Sabbath, whenever Sabbath was approaching, you know, you would hear Philip, like, get excited that the Sabbath was coming. You know, he's like, you know, this preparation. You know, he, he always talked about how that was just the most favorite, you know, time of the week was, you know, Sabbath. And um, I heard him just recently, I think it was last week, talking about, you know, oh, you know, he and Susie were hurrying, getting together to get things ready for Sabbath and things like that. And so um, I think it's amazing how God works. First of all, Philip, Philip sought out God. Uh, reading his word right mm -hmm. and it didn't stop at that and that's how awesome God is he doesn't stop with just that not only did he start reading God's word well all of a sudden prayer became important in his life and um and involvement in church involvement in the family um interacting with others I just want to say just in closing and I didn't mean to hijack this but I just I just have seen awesome things happen in Philip's life since then and again, it's impacted his family. Yeah. And it's impacted us, you know, as well. And I just wanted to tell you guys that that's the awesome thing about God. If you just seek him out, he won't just start and stop with one thing. He's going to keep growing you and stretching you. Because he wants to use you as an example, as a testimony, to show his grace and his goodness to people like us. So we can reach others for his kingdom. So, again, didn't mean to hijack, but I, I'm just... Uh, so thankful to God for his answered prayers. If you've got somebody in your life right now who's struggling with addiction, or it could be with something else, don't give up. Don't give up. You might spend years praying, like we did, and we continue to pray, but God hears and he answers prayers. And I'm so thankful for the changed life that I see in Philip and how it's impacted his family. I'm so thankful. Amen. Amen.